Hey, 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 it's Dano. We're here live in San Francisco, Academy of Art. And no, that's not me. No, that's not Docs. No, that's not Fra or Roberto. But we are New River TV. And we are going to take a little walk through this main museum and see what we have. <laughs> that Rolls Royce is pretty stout. Wide whites, black wire wheels. Oh, boy. We're going to do a couple passes. One for video and one for pictures. Rolls Royce. Phantom One Riviera Town Car, 1928. Whew. Man, look at this. I thought that was big. <laughs> this is gigantic. Look at this, fellas. It's a 28 Daimler. Royal Limousine. Right-hand driver. Wow, is that a beauty? I got to back up to get it all in the frame. And then, ho, ho, ho. Look at this. Now, this was a sporty car of the time. A Duesenberg J, dual cow phantom. Look at that. That's a sweet paint job on it. Look at those wide whites, wire wheels. Spare tire on the running board. We got dual spare tires, dual headlights, dual driving lights, dual horns. We just got a whole lot of dual going on here. Look at this. Exhaust pipes coming out of the side of the hood. Boy, did they make one heck of a car. And look at this. Now, do you expect to get the pipes coming out of the hood in the supercharged 1933 Auburn Speedster? Look at that. Almost like it has chrome reverse wheels, but they are hubcaps on wide whites. Four pipes this side, four pipes on the other side. Boat tail Speedster, two-seater, real hot rod. Three pedals, pulling gears. Look at that. Black Beauty. Let's see. Look at the instrumentation is Duesenberg. Right, look at that, huh? The handbrake right there, just in case you don't stop, they don't gear down. And the rear passengers sit way back here so they can't slap you alongside the head and say, hey, slow down. And what we have here. Looks like we have a 1930 Duesenberg Model J. Look at the difference on that. That is long. Look at those laps. How about that? Is that some piece of art right there? Look at it. They're both very, very, very similar. Just different in colors. I guess they're all pretty much alike. But you want to talk about art. You want to talk about design. Whoa! Fellas, look what I found. I found ha, Elvis 3, 59 Cadillac, prepared by Docs, Fra, Roberto, Manuela, the whole crew back there in Milano, Italy, John Dale Casino, Celebrity Customs. We saw this on Beverly Hills. That's where I met you folks. Look at this. I know the description I'm going to give it. I'll be able to write it better than I can say it. Look at that, Elvis so much time and effort and work went into this painstaking hours to perfect this automobile now it sits here in a museum in San Francisco for all to Google over the museum purchased it from Barrett Jackson a few years back I believe the price was like hundred and seventy thousand five hundred dollars look at these taillights they were you know, blown glass they looked like you know, maybe uh, clear factory original lamps, but uh-uh, they're custom blown lamps. Small rear window, and even a tonneau cover, or the, the T-tops have nice, luxurious covers to sit in. And it's an original stock motor, Cadillac motor. And you want to talk about expense, spare no expense. That grill, that is nothing but diamonds. I forget the number of diamonds, Doc's told me, in Beverly Hills, and we can interact that later on, but there is a lot of diamonds. So it's just not your typical caddy grill. You got diamonds. Diamonds are forever, or they say diamonds are a girl's best friend. Who said that? I think Marilyn Monroe. 
Look at that beauty. Look at here. Here's a right up on it. 59 Cadillac Elvis 3. Stately sits here at the Academy of Art University. We're going to read this a little bit. The custom car genre was created as a result of the 40s and 50s hot rod era. Talented and artistic young men would modify their cars and give them a sleek new look and show them off at the drive-in or the local car show. The Cadillac brand would become a perfect canvas on which to create these dream machines. The inspiration for this example was Elvis Presley, who pays homage to his well-known love of Cadillacs and later in his career for the Moyen style. This car was crafted near Milan, Italy by Celebrity Customs, created by Docs and Francesco, and was co-designed by local Bay Area legend John D. L. Gassino. It took nearly two years to build, and the features include phenomically released white maple T-tops with mother-of-pearl inlays, full air suspension, shaved handles with electric door openers, chopped roof, bespoke paint, fine Italian leather trim, and Saborski crystals in the front and rear grills, just to name a few of over 40. Mechanically, it's still stock Cadillac, has won many awards, including the coveted Sacramento Autorama Best of Show. And also was on Danovision YouTube video, Beverly Hills, Concord de Elegance. And moving on here, look at this, what we have here. Another beauty. Packard 10612 Coupe. And another Packard. <clears throat> Let's take a break. What about this Cadillac? I bet it gets a lot of a lot of oohs and ahs, huh? I mean, it's in this bay of cars. It definitely is very different than the Duesenbergs and the Packards we have here. Oh, you think? Yeah, well, <laughs> just a little bit. But you know what? But it has the bling. It has the bling. Doc's tells me those are all, you know, diamonds there in the, yeah, the yeah. front grill. It's got to be at least, you know, a thousand carats of diamonds there. Well, yeah. Apparently, they actually are Swarovski crystals. Yeah. 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 And uh, you got to love the attention to detail. I know. Putting they, each and every one of them in there. They, uh, a laborious effort, I imagine. The time it took to put all this together and make it just right. It's straight as an arrow. No waves in it. Yeah. No, it's uh, the car is is definitely a uh, a special car. We uh, we actually had it at the Hillsborough Concours uh, a few years ago, and um, of course, a lot of people think it was Elvis's car, and then right. we have to kind of say, you know, it's a tribute. Right. But um, it, there were a lot of pictures taken of it. It's uh, it's got a great look to it. Yeah, I remember when it debuted on the Rodeo Drive. Jeez. It was so hard to get a clear shot of it. It had a massive amount of people around it all day long. And I was there to the end to watch it put it back on the trailer and take it away. It was a really treat for me to run into these guys and uh, do a piece and get to see this car. It'd be, uh, it'd be interesting to know how long it took to build and kind of what his, what his uh, kind of vision for it was. Yeah, I, I believe it was... Well, exactly two years, and uh, I don't think they worked on anything else other than this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, John. Quality shows, that's for sure. Yeah, but I think it looks kind of nice sandwiched between a Duesenberg and oh, a Packard. Oh, I think I think so. Yeah. It, 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 otherwise, it, it wouldn't draw attention. It would just be it was put in other 50s, 60s type cars. It'd just be another 50s, 60s type car, maybe. But because you have, these, I don't know. Yeah, I think it pops pretty good. <laughs> but because you have these big headlight, big yeah. grill Duesenberg J's, uh, yeah, the white blends in. I remember last year when I was up here after Monterey Car Week, uh, I was going by and by accident I looked over here and I saw this building, and oh, I had to go around the block at a park, place to park, and I was looking through the windows taking a picture. I go, wow, this looks like Dox's car. And sure enough. You know, it's so funny. We spent a lot of time cleaning a certain section on the windows where people's hands and noses are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Every right. week. And you, you can just look at it right now. I mean, you can yep. just see fingerprints and nose prints. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're adult size, and then you get kid right. size down below. So earlier we were talking that you, besides this main floor here, you have two other buildings, and you may be going to a public instead of a private that's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it will be a, 
We're going to make it a public museum, and it's going to be called the uh, San Francisco Auto Museum. Wow. And uh, it will either be in one of the buildings we currently have now or mm -hmm. uh, in a building to, uh, to be determined in the future. Um, it's really about whether we want everything in one building or we can do a good enough job with, uh, with one of the buildings we already have. Right. Uh, but we're super excited about it, and it's going to be a nonprofit um, foundation set up to manage and, and operate the, the museum. And we're going to do a lot of local community outreach, get you know cars and coffee things going, and, and all, you know, all the kinds of things you would hope and expect from a world-class uh, destination. Right. Good idea. And uh, we're saying we got about 200 cars. Uh, almost 250. Yeah. Only 250 cars. Pretty heavily weighted in pre-war. Uh, big iron like you see here but we also have some incredible uh, post-war cars as well and uh, we uh, we were pebbled this past weekend and showed a Tucker and uh, the number three Tucker used to be owned by George Lucas yeah and we also showed a 31 uh, Minerva which is a very rare car and that car actually took second in class and won the uh, CCCA award the Classic Car Club of America Jeez. Award. so it did really well and um, we have gotten uh, first in class before. We've got some great French-bodied cars, and uh, and again, some wonderful one-off. We've got a Pierce Arrow, Silver Arrow, which is one of five in the world. Jeez. Um, these uh, done a really good job of collecting some really special cars. But uh, Mr. Stevens, who put together the original th this collection, this was really his personal collection. Um, was a big fan of Packards. Yeah. So we have quite a few Packards. He also loved the Duesenbergs and the B16 Cadillacs, so we have quite a few of those. And so uh, we're looking to kind of curate the museum now and you know reduce the herd, so to speak, on the cars that we've got extras of and, and use that to then invest and get some additional cars that really represent iconic design and, and uh, uh, transition points within the automotive history. because. Housed in this building is actually the Academy of Art University's School of Industrial Design. And so the uh, kids come down here and get what we refer to as a three-dimensional inspiration as opposed to looking at a book for different design cues and styles. And they can come down and they can lay hands on the cars and take a look and get inspired that way. Uh, and the school is led by Tom Matano, who is actually the fellow who designed the Miata. Oh. So, uh, so above me, we've got phenomenal facilities for uh, helping these uh, students on uh, automotive uh, design as well as uh, uh, other industrial design like designing um, like you know your phone or, or what your camera case would look like or shoes and, and things like that and they we also do some great work with the uh, leading automotive manufacturers out of Detroit and oh. actually out of Europe helping design some of the future cars and we've got well, we used to because we took them down for Pebble, but we'll have a bunch of prototype and clay models. They'll probably be brought down, back down today or tomorrow after taking down the uh, display that we had at Pebble this past weekend. Yeah, I imagine there's uh, still a lot of straggling coming in from Pebble that was yeah, I'm quite barely undertaken. recovered from it. I lost four pounds. Yeah, <laughs> just running around. <laughs> uh, speaking back to Tucker's, what color was the Tucker? Uh, it's like a strawberry cranberry look. Okay, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because I, I noticed there's maybe four of them. Oh, well, no, total. we had about 13 of them. 13, okay. Yeah, so the front, yeah. There originally was supposed to be about three or four, and they decided to open it up uh, to all the folks so they could get there. A uh, collector in my neighborhood in Costa Mesa, uh, Brent DeCoin, he has one, a beautiful uh, blue one. And then uh, uh, I think it's a Tucker Grandsons. I saw them in SEMA last year. Right. And did a little video with uh, one of the grandsons on the floor. Sure. Where they had it displayed. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, uh, they had a really good display. The, the, the Henry Ford Museum brought theirs. There was a, actually a, a uh, the prototype was there. Uh, they had an open chassis, so you could take a look at what you know the car was built on. It's it just an incredible story. Really. Yeah, Pebble is really amazing that uh, you know everybody from around the world basically goes there and they ship the cars there to be displayed. Sure. I mean, and then some of the quality of cars that actually do that 17-mile cruise and end up down on Ocean in Carmel. Yep. And all the people, I would be so nervous about cars getting scratched or handprinted or whatever. But 
Yeah, just park them. We did that in the Minerva. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. You know, it was incredible because you got a lot of really old cars. And, uh, yeah. Quite often to spend time in places like this or in private, you know, garages, and they're not necessarily exercise, but we do a really good job. The team here at the Academy um, does an exceptional job of ma maintaining the cars and making sure that they run. And, and you know, this Minerva is uh, was a straight cut gear, no non synchro transmission. And um, hmm. we uh, fired it up, drove it the, uh, the 70 mi miles on the tour, and came wow. back, parked, on, parked it on Ocean and Carmel, and uh, it was great. Car behaved perfectly, and we uh, we loved it. I, I rode in the back, and it was my first time doing the tour, and it was a lot of fun. I could not believe how many people were out there along yeah. the route, just right. waving and taking pictures. I may have you in one of my videos. <laughs> you could. I mean, our, our uh, the Minerva was so recognizable, being with the, uh, the green color, and being enormous, and also because it's a sleep valve engine, it uh, it, it created smoke signals out the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get on to the greens at Pebble, but I did everything else with the, the Concorso Italiano, did, which was fun. Yeah, which is uh, good. The fellas had uh, two guys uh, introducing their prototypes uh, mm -hmm. they want to bring in the market here in, uh, in the States. So I got the do a piece with them and to have to look at their cars and that was a big scrawling piece of property with a lot of Italians mainly uh, uh, it seemed like there was a heavy lately anyway a heavy focus on alphas on alphas? yeah yeah, yeah I can see that yeah. um, you know obviously the car that won that's a show right was an alpha and yeah the 2900 by uh, Dave Sidoric right beautiful car yeah yeah, I, I personally am a huge Alpha fan. Yeah, I, I when I was a kid, I really didn't pay much attention to them, and because uh, during during that time, I said MGs and Triumphs, and now looking back, and geez, you know, the Alphas were a pretty cool car, yeah. but I don't think uh, there were that that many around. Uh, I grew up upstate New York, so it probably wasn't uh, a desired mark. Yeah, I mean the post-war post-war Alphas are what everybody remembers or recognizes are the spiders. Yeah. And uh, the pre-war Alphas are, you know, the, the 6Cs and the 8Cs. Those are really, really special cars. And, and I mean, we've got that, our Alpha Aerodynamic over here in the uh, second car in on the left is a really, really special car, uh, hand-built for, to, uh, it's actually a replica, interestingly enough, but it was built by the Crozzeria that actually did the original car, because the original car no longer exists. So yeah. it is a literally a rivet, accurate um, yeah. recreation. Wow. But there, there's some great cars. Of course, the Bugatti at the end here is yeah. pretty hard to look at, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the right color combo and all. Yeah, it's a pretty special car. Am I seeing over there in a the corner there a, a Hudson convertible? Yeah, and we walk over there. We've wow. got a lot of other interesting cars down the side here. We've got a number of our uh, micro cars too, mm -hmm. some smaller cars. It's amazing how popular they are. Oh yeah, here the, yeah here's some of the prototypes. Oh yeah, we yeah. just put them in yesterday. NSX. Uh, wow. So all of these are made by the students, and these are actually Jeez. real clay models. Wow, infinity. And, uh, we're getting to the point. Um, where, because we have a wonderful 3D printing lab as well, and we'll get to the point where clay will be obsolete and you just huh. print them. Jeez. Yeah, Pretty technology. Cool. I love seeing what the students can come up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Delahaye. Yeah, there's that Alpha. And you'd love to drive that yeah. all down the oh, streets. Boy. Is that a Isetta over there, or a, that's a Messerschmitt? Oh, okay. Isetta, we do have an Isetta over here, yeah. blue and white. Wow. <laughs> you get in with the top, right? Flips up. Jeez. Pretty popular. Yeah. No. 
Dawson's. Pretty tell petite. people were a little smaller back then too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this Hornet H. Hornet. Uh, yeah, I was a, growing up as a kid. My dad was a Hudson guy, and uh, he dabbled in selling cars, and he'd bring home a Hudson, and the big in the, in the not in the convertible, but in the coupe. It had a bigger armrest in the back, and I thought that was a booster seat for me to sit on, <laughs> so I could look out. Yeah. See, you guys try that over here. Oh, okay. Most people who aren't familiar with them don't realize that you get it from the front. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think. And they by, actually make a four-seat version of this thing. Uh, I think it was by about 1963. BMW decided to go with the 1500, and. Stop making the Isetta. The sales were a little weak on them. Wow. We've got a really neat car down here in the right corner called the Squire. It's a pretty special car, beautiful car. See these They're Cadillacs. Backwards and Lincolns. And, uh, yeah, look at that. The slope the nose. Squire. Squire. Really special car. Can't say I ever heard of a Squire. There weren't many of them made. Wow. Wow. This the sunburst in the door panel. Damn. Beautiful. The wood. Oh. Fender skirts. Beautiful. Yeah. Is there any like straight six owner? Um, I'm not sure. Double overhead can, supercharged four cylinder. Four cylinder? Wow, oh, okay. Yeah. 110 horsepower. Wow. That's a pretty piece. Oh! That's what I had as a kid. MGBs. MGB. Matching. Okay. Camera. All right. <laughs> These have become very popular. A, yeah. A whole new, uh, how do I put it? Um, kind of a, a new culture of vintage campers that have really uh, come on strong yeah. in the last few years. Yeah. People people. Finding these old ones and restoring them. Exactly. MGA, my first sports car. Yeah. And it's a 60 out of 61. Disc wheels like that. Yeah. And that's where my trouble began. <laughs> Between the electrical and the leaks and having it back in the east in the wintertime, the two six volt batteries underneath the back would always foul out in the wintertime. special uh, uh, Mini Cooper S actually Australian made Australian made wow oh, hair drive yeah and uh, that used to be mine really yeah so it's special yeah several yeah. years ago wow yeah. but now it, does that have a 1275 or is that a yeah it's yeah. a it's a true Cooper S okay and uh, it's phenomenal yeah so, Another story, as a kid, uh, a friend of mine, we both had, uh, we went in together on a uh, an Austin Mini, an 850, and the only thing difference about it was the front wheels were a little bit wider, mm -hmm. and we would Jim Connor race it in uh, Jersey and lower New York, and we could never keep up with the 1275 Cooper S's, so they would whip our butt, but we were putting that class because of our wheel width. But it was fun to watch these uh, Cooper S's go around the pylons and lift the, lift the wheels around the pylon. Uh, they, the tracks were designed for uh, tight for these cars and straights for like the Corvettes. And usually always the Mini Cooper would always win its class. They kick tail. They are so fast, so yeah. low. 
car couple, you see them when they're racing, oftentimes you see them when they come around the corner on a track, their inside wheels off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was your motivation to dabble into a Mini? Uh, we went through kind of a small car phase, and uh, I, uh, I had always wanted to have a Mini Cooper S. We lived over in London and saw them everywhere, yeah. um, Minis, but I wanted to have the sportier one with the, the actual 1275, you know, dual dual uh, gas tank version and uh, happened to stumble across this one it was up in um, Lake Oswego, Oregon it was, and it was about a 90, 90% car in terms of uh, show quality and we finished it off and made it pretty much a 100 point car and, and uh, it won a bunch of awards <laughs> and the museum saw it and liked it and asked me about it. this is before I was associated with the museum they bought it so now it's kind of come full circle now that I'm here running the museum and <laughs> I get to look at my old car every day <laughs> wow and I also bought uh, during that period we had a uh, 19 uh, <clears throat> 1966 Fiat Multipla okay <laughs> which is only 10 inches longer than the Mini and it holds six people <laughs> wow uh, I know I was amazed how much room there is in these cars for, for people they're, they're really be. quite roomy they really are but don't you think, though, that maybe this should be in the front window? <laughs> What's that? The Mini. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing I never had was a TR3. They're fast. Uh, yeah. I had a 4A and a GT6, and uh, I didn't have a TR6 either, but I've always liked the design of those. And of course, uh, Morris, I have a buddy back home, Huntington Beach. Who has a Morris pickup truck? But it's not stock original. It's got a small block V8 in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's lightweight. And it's got tires that are almost as wide as the back of the truck. That's a '62. Now '63, they would go to the TR4, right? I believe. That's right. Yeah. And let's see, we got a couple of cool motorcycles. An Indian. That's beautiful. Yeah, wow. These are out of some spectacular examples. Though. I'd love to see more motorcycles added. Yeah, so it's 1914. Indian Big Twin. Wow. Yeah, it's you know, basically like a bicycle with a motor on it. <laughs> a little more involved in that, but yeah. Look how they different generation. They got a little more beefier. These. Oh, we even got a uh, the TC. Yeah. 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 Right hand drive. TA. So it's got the tick for Oh, TA. Okay. Yeah. See, I hadn't been able to distinguish looking at them. The difference between an A and a C, or an F, for that matter. I think an F is a little more, a little more squatty. Yeah. yeah. Well, that upholstery is so luxurious. Now this has, okay. Now I understand the taillights, and I just recently learned this. If it was a 1600, it had these taillights. Okay. Uh, the MGs. Because my 61 had those taillights, and I saw other 60s that didn't. Someone told me it was because it distinguishes the 1600 motor. Well, I had a 1957 AC Asica, and it had just Yeah, the, just that. Yeah. A lot of the British manufacturers shared, yeah. shared parts. Yeah. My 1960 Austin Healey has the same, you know, trunk latches as other MGs, and, yeah. and even uh, even my AC. I recently saw a twin cam down the uh, uh, La Jolla concourse. It wasn't in the show; it was off on the road. It was being it was sold and being shipped to, I think, New Zealand. It was a twin cam. Uh, cool. Well, that wraps up this floor here at the 
Academy of Art of San Francisco, California. And you just see me in some awesome collection of automobiles. Perhaps there's more to come.